Welcome everybody to the War and Peace Baseball Podcast, episode 80, Trade Deadline Edition. I am joined today by Farbod Markazi, I'm Alex Uwe. It's just the two of us today, we got so much news, so much excitement. How are you doing today, by the way? I'm I'm stoked to be back. It's I took a little bit of time off. Yeah, um, a little bit of time. Just I had I had orientation and then I've I've had had some work to do the last couple of weeks, but I'm stoked to get back to work. I'm I love talking about sports. Let's do this. Absolutely, it's good to have you back. Um, I guess now it's the other guys' turn to take a little hiatus at least for this week. But they're the ones missing out because we got some juicy, juicy stuff. Uh, hey, in my today. in my defense, the. The, before I left, I had I po- I had multiple baseball and basketball in the weeks, so that's true. I got I got my time in. You did. No, uh, nobody's calling you out there. Alrighty. All right. Uh, let's go. Let's go. This is a great great time to be podcasting. Great time to be live. Yeah. Well, I mean, by the time this is up, the trade deadline will have you know completely passed. It actually has passed earlier today, but there's so much news. From today and from this weekend, a very exciting weekend, some milestones, Hall of Fame weekend, all of that. But the uh, the one the one story that I wish people would talk about more that seems to be really downplayed is the fact that Tyler Duffy of the Minnesota Twins almost Randy Johnsoned a bird this weekend. He almost hit a seagull with a pitch. Okay, but 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 but, but you're forgetting the fact. That Chris Davis somehow randomly found a way to foul that off. I was getting to that. That was what makes it even more bizarre. You just see the seagull fly straight across the screen, right in front of the pitch, and then Davis still somehow gets a piece of it. He makes contact with the ball. And you he, how much he focus you so have confused. to have to hit a major league baseball, uh, like off of like a major league pitch, and then to have a bird fly through. But you still he he made like not solid contact. He made contact with it that's that's impressive on its own i think this is the big headliner that nobody really cares about i think we need to break break the news in the order of importance and i think this is definitely at the top of that list wait but that's kind of shitty to just think of just think of how a couple a couple centimeters missing that bird if it if it was just a little bit time differently and it hit that bird it would be what every single person is talking about they wouldn't be talking about anything else uh but that's not the case everybody is in fact talking about adrian beltre who just reached his 3000 hit milestone i mean congratulations rightfully so yeah absolutely he is definitely locked into the hall of fame at this point any doubts that people had about him before are silenced i would say um just a great guy you know even (laughs) <laughs> I mean, what's his name? Um, Felix Hernandez, class act today. Did you? I don't know if you saw yeah, it. Yeah, former teammates. He uh, went up and hugged him right before the at bat. That's that's just great sportsmanship yeah. in every way. I mean, those guys were some pretty fun teammates together back in uh, Seattle. No, so, it, Belcher wasn't me. that hot with Seattle though. I, I think he was d- down with some injuries there. Yeah, but it's Belcher. And then he, it's, and then he went on, fun on fire. And, yeah. He's amazing wherever he goes. Just don't touch his head. Yeah, and apparently, uh, if, if you move the uh, the on deck circle, you will you will be punished. Oh my God, even I, if you are I am Adrian Beltre. I am forever in love with that. That 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 was amazing by Adrian Beltre. <laughs> he <laughs> took it so well too. <laughs> <laughs> he like he did it naturally. You know, it was one of those things that he's like, before I retire, I have to do this once. I don't. Like, I, don't even, I don't even. I don't even think he was thinking about. What was going on? The umpire said you have to be in the on deck circle. He's like, okay, I'm just gonna move the on deck circle where I'm standing. It's just, come on. He's insane, bro. I good, mean, good for him. I think we have plenty of lovable Beltre yet to come. He's essentially in the prime of his career right now. I don't know if people realize that. Not the physical prime of his career, but definitely production wise, producing at a great rate here with Texas. The last few years, he's been doing as well as he's ever done in his career. Um, so I don't think he's he's gonna stop here and uh, fizzle out quickly. I think he's got a little bit left in the tank. He might have a David Ortiz type finish to his career where he just finishes really strong stats wise, but you know his body just can't take it anymore. He's um, thirty eight. Does he finish his career with the Rangers? Yes, I think he's not not gonna change teams again. I don't think that's in the in the cards right now. Yeah, things can change. I, I, I just don't see it happening personally. 
Uh, congratulations, nonetheless. Um, I think it's time to move into the really juicy stuff now. The trade deadline. Players flying left and right. Of course, you got the big names, and we'll go through those trades more in depth here. Darvish, Gray. Alex you know, Avila. Alex Avila, all the big names like that, and then we'll get into the smaller names. Um, not too in-depth. We'll make sure you know where everybody's going, all the the airplane flights that these guys have to take uh, to be in their new ballparks by tomorrow. And it, it's, there's nothing like looking at your your TV screen on August 1st or 2nd and seeing... Oh, it, it was I a lot better what, than last year's trade deadline, how did this, I must how say. How did this guy end up on our team? Yeah, I mean, it happens every Do you remember year. last year, we um, the trade deadline, it was... The, the, there were a couple of trades like a couple of days before where there was nothing on like there was barely anything juicy on the day of the deadline. So good on MLB. Yeah, a couple buzzer beaters even with the deadline. You could even say. So let's go ahead and jump right in here. We'll talk about you, Darvish first. He was the uh, the big tr- the big splash the Dodgers made right before the trade deadline actually occurred. It was probably the most breaking story of the day. And Dodgers really bolstered their rotation there, got the right-handed pitcher they wanted. Um, Darvish is a rental, I believe. He's going to be a free agent at the end of this year. Yes. Is that correct? So, I, I believe so. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think I, we talked about this earlier. Um, we were trying to figure out winners and losers for this trade because that, I mean that's the natural thing you do with trades. Like, oh wow, why why they do this? Why do that? I think when you look at both Texas and, and LA um, for where their both teams are like currently, I think both teams were win were, were winners. It was a good trade but overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the the uh, Texas Rangers received uh, Willie Calhoun, who's the most notable prospect. Uh, in this trade from the Dodgers and a couple other lower lower tier prospects that we don't really have to talk about. Three prospects really. total. So, you know, all things considered, Texas knows they're not a contender. Yu Darvish has no place on this team really going forward. I think it's the right move. It, no matter what you get for him, you, you just have to move him. And the fact, you know, they're bound to get something. Um, you know, some form of top level prospect which they which they sort of did achieve so um i think it works both ways la is going to have an interesting rotation now they still have an abundance of starting pitching most of it left-handed i will will add so it's going to be interesting to see how their rotation shakes out the rest of the way the masters of the dl that is the dodgers will probably uh continue to take advantage of that but that's a lot of names in there. You've got Kershaw now. You've got Darvish. You've got Hill. You've got Wood. Uh, you've got, you've got Wood. You've got um, Maeda. You've got Hunjin Ryu. Um, what happened to Scott Casimir? He did he die? Is is he still alive? He's is he with the Sugarland Skaters. Maybe he's um, but he's you know under contract with them in some form. They got Brandon McCarthy. They have so many names. Uh, they're gonna be needing to to pare that down a little bit and especially for the postseason you could i could really see a scenario where only four of those starters get any any starts at all it might even be less they might even roll with three who knows the dodgers can do whatever they want but depends on kershaw's back it's true kershaw will well, kershaw is going to be healthy by the playoffs i think we can establish that so you know, for the home stretch here, they're not really fighting for their division anymore. They're just rolling over everybody. Uh, Darvish, certainly a nice piece there. Um, you know, he's just a, a pure stuff guy that, that, that'll that play in the postseason. That's what they're looking for. It's the kind of move they're making. And then, of course, for the postseason, you're always playing for the bullpen. And they upgraded that as well. They acquired a couple left-handed relief pitchers. And that was one of their concerns. They addressed it. They got Tony Watson from Pittsburgh, which is a really pretty underrated trade, in my opinion. He's been really solid for Pittsburgh the last couple years, uh, closing games. This year has been arguably his worst since his um, rookie year in 2011, but this is another one of those deals that you could arguably say that, judging by where each team is in their 
in in their like you know what I mean in their mm-hmm. contention, both teams won it. The Pittsburgh got two prospects. Um, we we I am not too I I, I haven't researched the prospects too much. They're pretty low level prospects. They're pretty low. Um, and then the Dodgers got a solid thirty two year old reliever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Watson's been kind of overshadowed by Felipe Rivera this year in Pittsburgh, so I think Watson's going to fit in nicely there. He's not going to be closing games, obviously, with Kenley. Um, and neither will Tony Singrani. Wait, the Dodgers have a closer? Um, I think so. I think he's pretty good or something. He used to be a catcher. That's what I heard. Um, Tony Singrani also heading to L.A. from Cincinnati, and Cincinnati got back Scott Van Slyke. That's a fin- familiar name, non-prospect name, and they got another prospect as well. I think a catcher. Um, but, yeah, the, the Reds are clearing out little pieces that they can as well. Uh, the Reds are different this year. They don't really have quite as much to offer teams as they have in the past. Um, I'm a little shocked that Rysel Iglesias wasn't traded either. I just thought of that now. Um, I guess nobody really wanted to send a nice package over for the, uh, the young right-hander. So I think, you know, LA overall is not really much of a uh, debate. They're they're much improved. I think there's not much more conversation there. They were my World Series pick going into the year with Houston. That's Those are looking like really good picks, actually. I, I wish I could say the same for mine. Um, let's talk about the Yankees. Well, it's something we never do on this podcast, I know. And, you know, it's, it's, gonna be it, it's literally me. me two years ago with Sean Newcomb. We talked about him once, once a like week. But let's, let's, let's do it. The Yankees, it's not like they haven't made trades. Let's, let's talk about them. Yeah, absolutely. They made the other big splash today. They traded for Sonny Gray and sent three prospects back to Oakland. They sent uh You're forgetting Fowler. Jaime Garcia. That was the big splash. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. And then we we have to make sure to get to Alex Avila also. The, oh, absolutely. The big bomber. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Oakland was sent a nice package of Fowler, Mateo, and Caprillion. Uh, those are, you know, if you're not a Yankees fan, you don't really know what that means, I think, for the most part. Um, which, as a Yankees fan, makes me happy because we did not give up either of our you know, top guys. We didn't give up Gleyber Torres or Clint Frazier, who has been doing really well in the big I league think, so far. I think when you look at this, I know Oakland's – I talked about this with you earlier. Um, I know Oakland's very high on Mateo. They think he's um, – I mean, plus plus like that, obviously, and his speed. They they, they, they say it's, um, what, Billy Hamilton level of just speed. They, they, they're they in love with him um, and – um, they see Fowler and Caprillion as um, high upside potential guys coming off of their injuries. We don't know how they would how they're going to come off, but if they pan out, this could end up being a good trade. Yeah, extremely for risky. Oh, very very risky, especially judging by uh, um, how Billy um, Billy Bean had the leverage of saying, "Hey, I have I have club control over Sonny Gray. If I don't get the offer I want right now, I don't have to trade him." Didn't um, stop him from trading Josh Donaldson. I'll tell oh, you that much. Oh well, but that's that's Josh Donaldson. No, that was that was a different case. That was going into arbitration and money. But um, I guess, but they, it's still pretty good team control there. I, I'm yeah, I mean, I mean, you're not wrong, but like they have I'm, like legit control over Sunny Gray. So, I mean, good trade. It looks like a good trade right now for the Yankees. But if Fowler and Caprillion um, pan out, watch out. Right, just you don't you don't give Mateo a, a second thought about him actually panning out. That's like he just glanced right over him there. Um, you know, as a Yankees fan, I followed these prospects you know somewhat closely. I saw Fowler. Well, we we followed right Caprillion go at UCLA. Caprillion and yeah. at and at Beckman. Yeah, from our hometown even. So yeah, he, he, he's Caprillion, he's at one of our rival school. Caprillion rival might be the highest upside player in this in this deal overall. Just as yeah. A, yeah as a young pitcher and it seems the success rate of coming off of Tommy John surgery is getting a little more uh, stable as these procedures improve. So hopefully Caprillion finds some success in Oakland going forward. I wish him, I wish him all the best. And I, I wish Sonny Gray the best here in New York because it's a tough place to pitch. It's much different than, I wish him the best. 
Yeah, I mean, do you think New York will affect Sonny Gray in any way? Do you think he'll rise to the occasion? Do you think he'll... Oh, bro. He, Sonny Gray has pitched... He came up as a rookie, pitched in those big um, games in the ALCS against the Tigers, if you remember those. A- ALDS against the Tigers, if you remember those. P- pitched very well. He's a tough guy, and I think New York's going to be fine with him. Hey, when you're right, you're right. I'll take that any day. New York also managed to add Jaime Garcia to their rotation. They got him from Minnesota and sent a couple prospects back that way. I'm just confused. Um, why? Yeah, so Garcia was traded from the Braves to the Twins, and then the Twins decided to flip him immediately, which is something that I'm surprised more teams don't do. I think that's a really good strategy. Uh, it takes a lot more effort, a lot more negotiating, obviously, but I think it it's a unique situation where the Twins weren't really sure when they traded for him if they should contend, and now it's a little more clear that they are likely not going to. So Garcia in New York. Courtesy of the about, Dodgers. You know what? I, I do like that piece a little bit. Courtesy of the Dodgers, what? Uh, they're not contending after the Dodgers just manhandled them. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. A little bit, a little bit late up. That one there. Wasn't sure what you were talking about. So, Garcia, he is, you know... He's, when, you, he's, when you look at him, he's um, when he was with the Cardinals, he was always one of the mo- more consistent pitchers. Like, the whole time he was with the Cardinals, ERA-wise, just solid. And then he's been str- struggling this year. Uh, do you think he's going to be... Who was the fifth man in the rotation for the Yankees? Um I'm I'm blanking right now. Well, I'm not sure if Montgomery is going to keep that rotation yeah, no, that's spot, what I'm which saying. is really I, shocking. I, Montgomery's done really well this season, but um, his last start wasn't so good. He might, yeah, struggled at he might be dealing with innings limits too, which would limit him, so they might move him to the pen. Uh, I'd, I'd see that happening. I don't think there's a – I don't have a problem with that. Uh, Severino will probably see innings limits as well going down the stretch here, so we'll see how that all pans out. Yankees have options now, which is – Always a good thing. Uh, and I think something that is always what I look at first in these trades is when players go uh, to the other league, especially pitchers, if they can take advantage of that adjustment period and put up some really nice numbers, um, at least in the first month of their their time with their new team. Jaime Garcia is not really pitched against American League teams. He played with the Cardinals, played with the Braves, and... Uh, you know, pitch one game with the Twins. So I think he's going to be seeing plenty of fresh faces, and if he can take advantage, I think that's going to be a really good piece down the stretch here for the Yankees. That's my initial reaction to uh, Garcia. So How much do you think that Jaime Garcia Twins jersey is worth? Ooh, I don't know. Nowhere near as much as the Bartolo Colon Twins jersey. Imagine being that one fan that sees, oh, we, <laughs> we got a new player buys his jer- uniform, buys his jersey, sees he gets traded. There's like, got to be some people out there that must buy every jersey. Some Somebody with way too much money that buys every single jersey. Hey, good good on them. Favorite team. There must be somebody like that, right? Yeah. Maybe I'll be that person when I grow up and become I hope rich I and famous. I'll buy a Markazi jersey someday. What I'm, team What team will it be for, though? Uh, the Sugarland Skaters. Ooh, maybe. I'm, I'm actually referring to your brother, so it'll probably be a major league team. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> ah, I mean, you're not wrong, but okay. I got you there. <laughs> you, you, Wow, your ego right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done. You're done. You're done. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the smaller trades that happened. Not going to talk about the, uh, the back and forth so much as we did in this one. I'm going to talk about these somewhat significant players move into new teams so you're not surprised when you turn on your tv tomorrow and uh see some new faces and new teams um the first which i'll talk about is somebody you have seen in their new uniform already that's eduardo nunez who was traded to boston um i guess second time's a charm with san francisco third baseman in in uh, boston what do you say did you seal that joke yes I, 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 Full I saw disclosure. <laughs> Do you have a problem with that? I think it's pretty accurate. I just exposed Alex Uli. Exposed, but not not ashamed at all. 
Eduardo Nunez well, actually uh, was responsible for basically beating the Royals in a really close game. I think they won 9-8. to eight. He had two homers in that game and also had the uh, the game-winning fielder's choice in which Sandy Leon slid into home plate with a fantastic ninja slide. It was a great finish, a uh, great way to... 10 out of 10. In, yeah, 10 out of 10 would, would watch again. Um, yeah, Nunez looks like he'll fit right in in Boston. Um, yeah, I think... I think Nunez has been an underrated player for a couple years now. Ever since he really, he really has. Found, he found his stride with the Twins, really. Yeah. Sadly, sadly not with the Yankees. So. I, th- I think he um, he's been underrated because he was with the Twins. No offense, but I mean, if he came up and played like this, found a stride with the Yankees, I, I don't, I don't. We, we, you think we would have talked about him more? Oh, we'd be talking about him like the next. Derek freaking Jeter, so exactly like we we have not been talking. We no one's really been talking about him much. I really like him. He really hits well. Um, he's a good contact back. Hits well against lefties too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's out of he's out of San Francisco, one of the worst hitters parks. Always a good thing. Boston yeah. also traded for Addison Reed from the Mets. That's a nice bullpen piece to add there. Uh, very strong bullpen. You know, Craig Kimbrell's been as good as it gets, but a lot of those other smaller pieces there have been holding down the fort. But Addison Reed really does bolster that. Um, any any doubt that lies in the the back half of the pen, they pretty much have the eighth and ninth locked up now, so it's good to see. Um, Jonathan Lucroy is another name who was in very very different circumstances a year ago. Who he was traded to Texas for the playoff stretch. Are you telling me he was he was because he was good a year ago? Yeah, he was relevant. Now, I mean, he's a little bit relevant now. We're talking about <laughs> him, <laughs> but uh, he was traded to Colorado. I mean, he he is going to Coors, so I mean, always a good thing. So he was traded for a player to be named later. Um, everybody's favorite player. It's really sad. Yeah, how how the mighty have fallen in just a year's time. Uh, I hope he can get his stuff together on the defensive end of things. I think that's the most important thing because Colorado doesn't need any problems with their catchers. They have plenty of problems dealing with their ballpark and their pitching staff. It's already very young. Uh, Luke Roy does not need to contribute to that problem. I think if he can get his head straight and try to help these guys, he's still going to be a valuable veteran to, to guide these young pitchers and maybe get the stroke working again in course field. Um, he's a definitely a uh, a guy you want to to own in fantasy. That's wasn't he traded for Luis Brinson and another prospect last year? He was. It was, and now him, he was traded he, for a player to be named later. It was him and Jeremy Jeffress traded to the Rangers in exchange for Brinson and Perez. I think that's a, that's a yeah. pitcher that they got back also. And Jeffress is actually getting traded back to Milwaukee at this deadline. Who, Milwaukee's still in the race, so they want him back. Uh, it was a really weird uh, situation with that trade. I think uh, Milwaukee did pretty well for themselves there. Um, so yeah, Washington Nationals, another big powerhouse team. They haven't been too, too active this trade deadline. They did add a couple relief pitchers from Oakland early on, and they just added Brandon Kinsler from the Twins to their to their bullpen. So that seems like the clear-cut closer at this point. And Madsen and Doolittle will split time in the eighth, matchups, whatnot. Kinsler's been really good for the Twins so far. So I th- I don't see anything changing there. I think he's going to be a solid piece as he has been for most of the year. Um, Alex Wilson, another bullpen piece, traded with the almighty Alex Avila to Chicago. The Cubs wanted to improve their bullpen as well and they got another backup catcher i don't know what it is about i guess the uh the cubs had been rolling without a backup catcher for a while i don't know what they've been doing i actually haven't paid attention to that at all that's probably pretty significant wouldn't you say yeah absolutely i mean just looked at um I, i just talking about alex avila like alone just the career he's had his Dad, I think, is the general manager. One of the general managers of the um, Tigers has his son on his team. Lets him leave for the White Sox. Has a terrible year with the White Sox. Gets released. 
comes back to the Tigers, d- does really good, he trades his son again. So, I mean, <laughs> at least you know there's no, like... No favoritism. Like, no favoritism at all. Yeah, that's... that's that's I did not know that, actually, so... Al Avila, I think. What do you know? The, I, is either the president or, like, general manager or something. He's somewhere up there. I, I think, uh, you know, the Cubs definitely not in this position they wanted to be at this point in the season, they wanted to be the Dodgers and the Nationals, you know, just looking for those last. I mean, they expected to, that to sure up their to sure up their and team. Being and being completely team. honest, going into this year, we all I think expected that. Um, uh, I mean, wasn't he most of our our um, wasn't he most of our World Series? They them most of our World Series picks <laughs> going into the year. Yeah, you got through that one okay. The Dodgers pick is looking pretty good for you. I'll, I'll say. Oh, again. absolutely. I'm. I'm very happy with that tri- with that pick and with the Astro pick. Yeah. By the way, Victor Caratini has been the backup catcher for the Cubs. He is a uh, young guy who's making Carrots? his Car- Carrots Teenies. Um, first year up there for the Cubs, so now they got a little more depth. It's always a good thing. So we'll keep it rolling here. Melky Cabrera was traded to Kansas City. I like that move a lot. Melky Cabrera has been underrated yet again, having a really nice season sitting as well as he ever has really you know he hit he was hitting like 350 that one year where he was an all-star with the giants he, that guy can swing the bat he's got great hand-eye coordination he looks like a royals hitter to be fair he doesn't doesn't hit a lot of homers it hits the ball in the gaps a lot i think he's gonna have fun there so tampa bay is another team who added a few pieces we'll go through all of those lucas duda was one of the more significant ones uh, from the Mets, he is in Tampa Bay now, and he already made a little bit of a splash. He's hit a couple big homers for them late in the game. And they've also added a couple back-end pieces, Sergio Romo and Steve Ciszek. Former closers galore in Tampa Bay right now. I think these are the kinds of deals at the trade deadline that you can make and say, you know what, I want to bring in some guys with experience, give them a new fresh look, give them some new batters to face. Romo has postseason experience too. Posting experience helps a lot, and I think Tampa Bay is really smart and just, you know, even if they're not the most, you know, marquee premier names, they are going to be names that will help down the stretch, especially, you know, it, it is a risk. It's always a risk taking guys like this. They have not done very well the last year and a half or so, the last couple of years, but, you know, you you can always take a chance. Hey, they were once really good. Maybe this... This environment will be good for them, and they went with it. I do like what Tampa Bay has done a lot this uh, this trade deadline. Um, Tampa Bay also was involved in the other side of things. They traded Tim Beckham to Baltimore, which was a little bit out of nowhere, it seems, because Tampa Bay is actually contending. I don't know. Is, is Beckham been playing full-time at shortstop? They do have Brad Miller back. That might affect their decision there. Um so Tim Beckham is going to be playing in Baltimore now, and he looks like he's going to get a lot of playing time, uh, especially because they've been starting Ruben Tejada. Uh, whose idea is that? So Tim Beckham will be playing shortstop in a really hitter-friendly ballpark. I think that's going to be something to look at as well. Uh, we'll keep it rolling here, though. If you if you have any thoughts on any of these guys, just jump right in, please. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm so like wondering where Tim Beckham's going to slot in because you asked that question before we, like when we were planning this and I was like, I, I don't know. I, I at first thought Machado was still short, but no, 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 no. he hasn't been in shortstop in a long time. And uh, JJ Hardy is still there in Baltimore injured right now. I don't know what his, time has a manager like ever been involved? Return. Has a manager ever built, been so in love with his average shortstop as Buck Walter? With J.J. Hardy? Mm, yeah. I want to say yes, and I just can't think of it off the top of my head. But I'm sure there's cases where players just love, or managers just love having their, their veteran guy there, even if he's not producing anything. Actually, I got one for you. I'll see Escobar with the Royals. There you go. Boom. Uh, hey, there you go. We did it. That was, that was an easy one. All right. <laughs> uh, a few more names here to throw out there that I think are significant. Adam Rosales of the... Athletics was traded to Arizona. He is going to be a nice utility piece there. I think Nick Ahmed, uh, one of the depth shortstops for Arizona, is on the DL right now. So Rosales could see some time at short. 
he can see his time basically all over the place as a utility man. Uh, I do think he's a really dynamic player. He's, I think it's a really good addition just from a from a clubhouse perspective for Arizona. Yeah, it's good energy, and that yeah. matters. People don't think about that quite as much, but that definitely matters. The energy they bring. Um, Francisco Liriano is one that requires a little. That's more an interesting one. Houston traded for Liriano. I think as a very very short term experiment while McCullers is on the DL, uh, I don't you think, know the you details. You think he's going to be in the rotation? He uh, is going to make a few starts I know, for them. I know a lot of teams when they when they express interest in him were interested in him as a bullpen piece, not not starting. Well, here's the thing. I think the Astros are in a unique situation where they can use him as a starter and they can use him as a reliever, or they could just dump him and, and it wouldn't make any difference to them. I think they. If I were the Astros, I would want to try him out as a starter while McCullers is on the DL, see how that goes. If it doesn't go well, they do have Brad Peacock currently in their in their bullpen after making a really good stretch of starts for them. He's back in the bullpen since Keiko was back. Um, but now with McCullers out, I think they have a little leeway to try Liriano, see if they can extract a little more from him. And if, you know, if worst comes to worst you use peacock for an extended period of time there you can put him back on rotation they're really flexible there in houston so yeah iliriano is an interesting one to keep your eye on i always like looking for pitchers pitching for really good teams because it matters if, when you're getting the runs support and you're getting you're comfortable it definitely affects performance uh, a few more names i'll throw out here joaquin benoit from the phillies traded to pittsburgh Jeremy Jeffress, as I mentioned earlier, was traded to Milwaukee, and I think this last one is really something different here. Uh, Joe Smith. It's a great story. Yeah, Joe Smith was traded to Cleveland. Uh, you know, obviously a great bullpen piece. He was with the Angels and then the Blue Jays, and now in Cleveland. And I think part of this was due to the fact that his mother is dealing with some medical conditions. I believe. Um, what was it again? The uh, yeah, Huntington's, I think. Yeah, uh, and she is being treated in Cleveland. He's been doing a lot of work there when he when he can. Um, very involved in that area right now. So him being able to be closer to where he's needed for the most part is always a really good thing. And I think um, it's just it's just heartwarming to see that that human element of a trade working out for for a player like that. So oh, I'm a I'm a big Joe Smith fan from the time he was. With the Angels, um, even like a little bit before, when he was still with the. I'm sorry, you uh, you're cutting out there. I don't know what you're saying. When I first read, I was like, "Oh, that's cool. He's going back to the Indians." And then I and then I saw the tweet about his mother's medical condition. I was like, "Oh, that's a really cool story." And I mean, he's also a pretty good right-handed arm out of the pen. Yeah, up upgraded team for sure. Definitely a playoff team so you know good for him and uh that's gonna be most that's gonna be pretty much all of these significant players that have changed teams in the last couple days there's a lot of names i know i'm gonna need a glass of water right now um but i'm gonna push through for the sake of profession of prof, for the sake of being professional here um you, you know that's what we're all about right it's it's a very professional professional we're a professional run. podcast yeah, we absolutely. Are. Definitely. Um, if something I did want to go through here before we completely move on from the trade deadline is a few names that notably were not traded that looked like they were going to be moved. And of course, there's the waiver deadline, which goes on for a bit longer. And I don't know all the details on that, which players specifically are um, going looking like likely pieces to move. So, um, there's a few other players here that we'll talk about that were notably not traded. Actually, before we do that, I just had one pop into my mind that I completely glossed over um, a, a name that was traded that I didn't talk about. Um, Howie Kendrick was traded. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was one that I forgot to mention. He was with Philadelphia and he got traded to um, where do you, you got traded to the Nationals. The Nationals picked him up. I'm That's a big really Howie Kendrick fan. Yeah, the Nationals really needed some some depth in their their outfield, and 
possibly in the middle infield as well. So it's a really seemingly perfect fit for him. I don't even know how that came into my mind. Just did. I don't know. Um, but there you go. So let's talk about a few names that weren't traded. Brad Hand is probably the most puzzling one. He looked... I'm very confused. The Padres aren't going anywhere, obviously. Brad ah, Hand no way. has been fantastic this year. Left-handed pitcher. So many teams want left-handed bullpen depth. No, and they just decided to uh, not pull the trigger or anything. They did say, the Padres did say that they wanted to bring in a really big package for Hand. Um, so. Being completely honest, how I, I'm sorry, but if it's your first year of being, like, if, if it's like your player's first year of being this good, um, what are the odds that you'd get a big package? Because... I think There's, I think the odds were really good for them to get a a, a nice okay, but like yeah, how, like what do you think they they could have gotten for him? I don't know. That's going to be a hard hypothetical to throw out there. Even if you get in a situation where you get one somewhat top prospect and some lower level prospects to to accompany there, that's going to be something you have to pull the trigger on and i think it says a i mean lot there's about another positive. there's another reliever that we're gonna get to britain um i like these guys are obviously the game of baseball is changing with how important it's been changing with how important relievers are and before it was like relievers weren't getting paid much compared to the other guys because they you know what i mean yeah. and uh, and like their value has gone up big time but i still like with britain I, I understand the big package. With hand, I would be more hesitant to give up a hu- like a big package to I'll, I'll give up like pieces but not a big package to get him. I, I still need more I than think, um, a year you know, uh, a couple months worth of like good performance, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I th- you know it, it, it's easy to say that from this perspective, but you know there's plenty of teams out there that are looking for something to really improve their chances not just you know fill the void so brad hand was definitely going to look like that type of player and i'm just surprised nobody nobody went after him the dodgers looked like a perfect fit and they went after tony watson and um tony singrani instead they found cheaper options so good for them um, that's what i was going to bring I think up it says a lot about the, how the padres feel about brad hand i think they they think he has a really solid chance to keep up um this kind of production and you know, it, if it comes to it next year, his value might even go up. So who knows? Um, I'm not concerned in any way. I don't think it changes anything. Brad Hand's still going to get saves in, in San Diego, so there's that. Um, if you're thinking it th- from that angle as well. And you mentioned Zach Britton, who is not traded also, who is in a lot of trade talks. He's obviously one of the best relief pitchers in all of baseball. And it would have been an interesting case to see if he would have been traded to a team with a established closer already who who would take over you know there's whispers of the dodgers maybe going to try to to get britain that would have been interesting thing to figure out there with jansen and britain in the ninth but i think uh it's not a huge surprise to me that britain staying where he is that would have been a really shocking one for me actually if he traded but he was involved in a lot of trade talks i thought um it's interesting that nothing actually happened they don't like pitching him in playoff games why would they trade him now Right, right. Um, all right, so a couple starters here, too. Verlander was the other big righty starter that looked like he could be on the move. Tigers aren't going anywhere, and they've already been selling off pieces. But Verlander's going to stay where he is. I I personally didn't expect him to be moved. Um, the next guy you're going to get to, I expected Santana to get moved. Um, but Verlander, I, I, I just don't know how you move that contract. Is he going to be a career Tiger, do you think? Um, I, I, I would think so. I like that contract is just hard to move. You know what I mean? And do you know what year he signed through? I don't know off the top of my head. I'll, I'll look that up right now. Okay. And the thing is, it's not like he's that far removed from being dominant. He was what second in the Cy Young. He arguably should have won Cy Young last year. He, uh, yeah, he definitely should have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's he's uh. Still got really nice stuff. Not having a good season this year. The walks are way up. The, you know, it's just not looking like vintage Verlander, which I think is a not an attractive thing to trade for at this point. 
but you know, still a top line pitcher for sure uh, when he needs to be. And Irvin Santana is the other guy with the Twins, who is staying where he is. Jaime Garcia is on the move, but the Twins didn't go all out and sell everybody. Santana's gonna see it through this year. He signed twins, through 2019, ten years, 219 million dollars. That's Verlander, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And twenty, and there's a vesting option for 2020. Yeah, I could, I could see a scenario where he pitches with the Tigers for the yeah. next few years. So those are just a few names there. Any others that pop in your head before we move on here? No, um, but what I was gonna be, what I was gonna say is, I think it's. Interesting how um, when I, like like I said I didn't expect Verlander to be moved and I expected Santana, but given Santana has had a great year this year, but when you're still a manager of a winning team and you have to choose between one of those two guys, take the salary out of it to give the ball to in in like a wild card game. It's it's Verlander. He's been in that spot. He has stuff. He he's he does tough. Have stuff. He has he still has good stuff and. I think I trust him much more than Irvin Santana mm-hmm. in that type of game. It, it, that's that's the ironic part. Like taking the salary out, you know. I nah, I don't know. Verlander's still really good stuff wise. Yeah. So that's gonna wrap up most of our trade deadline talk. Actually, how many times do you think we said package in that whole discussion? How many times did we say trade? Trade. Uh, I think if we can get somebody on the the trade counter and the package counter. What about the big, um, the, big the Dodgers? Counter. Uh, there's too many there's too many things to keep track of you're just gonna start saying all the words and that's this that's not fun at that point uh you, you gotta you have a point right there you gotta keep it fun you gotta keep it light so uh there's a few other things we'll talk about before we wrap up here um Gio gonzalez today took a no hitter into the ninth inning and was quickly broken up by d gordon but congratulations to him he um d gordon took steroids he did and uh you know, I think Gio Gonzalez dedicated his start to Jose Fernandez. Um, oh, happy birthday, Jose Fernandez! Twenty-five today. Um, yeah, that's that. I, I saw that notification while I was driving. No, I don't track my phone while driving. Yeah, don't. But yeah, that that could have been. Uh, it just came up, and I and I um, and it said his mother visited the crash site, and I was, I was like, wow, that's that's just you. There, you can't put words to get. You know, you can't put words together to, like describe that whole situation um happy birthday jose fernandez M- missed he's very missed yeah well geo geo served him well and uh for the opposite team i guess <laughs> if that makes any sense but uh it's a good performance either way geo gonzalez continually ignored as you know a pretty good he's pitcher. underrated he's very consistent and yeah every now and then he'll get your attention with a big game like this so good job geo uh, in the same division, Ahmed Rosario is going to get the call, and he's going to make his debut on Tuesday. That's today, the day this podcast is going up. So any expectations for Rosario the rest of the way? Uh, obviously, I think they're going to clear the path and let him play full-time at shortstop. Yeah, I don't see any other scenario. No. So Rosario is one of the better contact hitters. Great speed, great glove. Uh, I think he's going to to flourish in the the new york environment as you as you said about sunny gray i i do i do hope so anyway you know ahmed rosario has been really hyped this year everybody's been waiting for it so now we get to see it and uh maybe he'll he'll join michael conforto and really bring some 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 actual offense yeah some actual offense some young energy back to the mets that's always what they're looking for there Every team could use a little more young energy. Um, one team that lost a little bit of young energy in today's game was the White Sox, who Johan Moncada collided he's, with the he's second. He's day to day, though. Johan Moncada, yeah, collided with the the right fielder on a shallow pop up, or was it the first baseman? I don't remember. He collided with somebody on a shallow pop up. It was it was the right it was right fielder. Um, in his knee, I I I just want I just have head. to share my situation. When this happened, um, I was in fantasy talks with another team, and he, I was a, a like in talks to get Mankata. And then at that point, I saw the notification. I said, um, "I said Mankata's hurt by," because 
<laughs> like because the way they worded it said, "Oh, he's being carted off the field." He's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, well, right now I think it's just a bruised knee. But oh, right now it says it's a bruised knee, but like it looked like it could have been what a lot, a lot worse. Yeah. It could have been it, there were ACL rumors. Could have been a lot worse. It might and, be pretty bad for the guy who he freaking kneed in the head. That might not turn out so well. I don't. I don't know the details about that. I. I don't even know who's playing right field for the the White Sox in that game. Is that bad? Is that bad that I don't? I don't care about the little guy in today's game. You it's know what? Willie Garcia. You know what? You, that that's what you do. You look out for the little guy in in this game, even though I'm sure Me? he's a pretty large human being. Yeah, you're you're the name guy. You're always making sure we give credit because, where credit is due. Because I can say the names and Rudy can't. Yeah, that's exactly right. We need somebody to do it. Uh, nice, so that's, that's your uh, that's your White Sox update. I can't imagine they'll be making a lot of news Updates. in the next next few weeks or unless months. they call people up. Basically, basically just, they got a lot of fun just, names yeah. for call ups. So we'll keep you up to date on that. And uh, one other note that I'll make is David Price is also back on the DL with I think just elbow discomfort at this point is what they what they said. But that's not a good sign, obviously. They need to take their time with him and really slow everything down and just take it easy with him. They're not going to have him for a while then, if, if that's going to be the case. I'm not sure what, how much time exactly he's going to miss due to this. But the Yankees aren't getting any worse, so Yankees and the Red Sox are going to be having fun down the stretch. And the Rays, even. Uh, all these teams still in the where, where would you put the Yankees right now in the American League? In the American League, just uh, rankings wise, yeah, I would say that they are the second best team. I would say they're the second best. Team I the I will I will I'm gonna I will agree with you. Um, I think their bullpen is just too insane to ignore. exactly. I think um, when you when you look at the team itself, um, what a month ago, a month and a half ago, we you could look at the teams, not record wise, just how good the teams are. I don't. I don't think it was the Astros and then the rest of the AL, basically. Um, there were good teams in the AL, but none of them came close to the Astros. I think what um, Cashman's done with the bullpen itself, that's like... Yeah, not to mention, but, um, start, they, they, have they some, addressed the rotation, they addressed everything. They, they have, and arguably, they, they kept their core, um, and they have so many weapons coming out of their pen. They, you don't have a bullpen that strike that can strike out as many guys in the in the league as the Yankees do. The shortens the game. Sonny Gray only has to go five innings, and you can bring in Canley, what um, Batances, Robertson, Chapman. What not that order, but like you know what I mean. Um, Chad Green. It. Chad Shout Green. Out to Chad Green. Rip the Yankees' random white bullpen pitchers. Uh, <laughs> well, what do you mean? Rest, they're they're flourishing better than ever. Not pitching. What? By not pitching? No, he is. He's he's been really good. He's been their setup man. No, no, no. I'm talking about like the overall like Yankee bullpen vibe. It's it it's like it's still... always Chapman and Batances and a bunch of random white dudes. Yeah, um... it is. It, it the legacy <laughs> continues. Praise Cashman. <laughs> I it's it's fun to praise the Yankees. You guys, everybody listening, uh, if you're not already associated with the team. Be a Yankees fan. It's a lot of fun. You'll understand what I'm saying more, too. Don't do that. Let's, don't do that. Okay. SoCal, baby. All right. You're, you, and your, you and your favorite teams and whatnot. All right. So it was also Hall of Fame weekend this past weekend, and you know, Pudge Rodriguez, Jeff Bagwell, and, and uh, Tim Raines were all inducted into the Hall of Fame officially this time. This time. They've actually finally... Tim Raines this time. This time. They've all been officially inducted, so congratulations to them. Fantastic careers. Congratulations to Adrian Beltre, future Hall of Famer, on his 3,000 hits yet again. I figured I'd mention that. Um, A couple little things here we'll do before we end off. Uh, One of them is the... We'll give you the July War Report. I know we didn't do one for June, uh, basically due to neglect, but July has passed. It is August 1st, and... We'll go ahead and fill you in on the the leaders in wins above replacement from this past month. So Jose Altuve has been absolutely tearing it up. He was worth 2.2 wins above replacement based on Fangraph's war. And James Paxton led the way for pitchers with two wins above replacement. Um, 
you know, both these guys had unbelievable months. Jose Altuve finished with a 485 average in the month, I believe, which is very Jose Altuve of him. You know, I'm I'm amazed that this where guy where seems would you get... put him in in the MVP in the MVP running round right now? Yeah, second behind Judge. Yeah, and I might um, change. It might change. Do you think? Do you think um, Trout's going to come up possibly? Trout's going to make a push. I don't think he's going to get it just because his team's not making the playoffs. He's not. Gonna I, get I don't think he's going to make. I don't think he's going to be MVP. But I, do you think he's uh, going to be top two? Is what you're asking? Like, I know you're concerned. Keep about the streak streaks. going. I know you. Keep I know you love going. your streaks. Yeah, it's going to really take Judge or Altuve to fall off here. Yeah, uh, this last or unless Trout just goes back to being by far the best player in baseball. For I mean, last it's, not, it's entirely not, possible. It's not like Trout wasn't on that pace before he got hurt. You know, I do, so. I do see a path to him keeping the streak alive, and I kind of hope he does because I love streaks as much as you do. But I also love Jose Altuve, so I'm really conflicted, and I love Aaron Judge. I love all these guys, man. Um, I love baseball. I love baseball. We love it. Uh, James Paxton, I love him too because he has really been keeping it going uh he basically did the same thing in april and dealt with some injuries and was a little shaky but you know he's proven that he is definitely harnessed something he's figured something out and he is looking like a top of the rotation pitcher going forward top pitcher in all of baseball possibly he was the top one for the last month anyway so congratulations to them oh and you you want me to list off a few of the other names that were pretty high up on the uh, the war leaderboard this past month uh, go ahead. Out. So Anthony Rendon and Bryce Harper both had 1.8 wins by replacement. No surprise there, really. But the next tier down is a little more interesting. Whit Merrifield was worth one and a half wins by replacement, as was Chris Taylor of the Dodgers and Tommy Pham of the Cardinals and, and Nolan Arenado of the Rockies, which is less surprising. But these guys, you know, that's that's pretty impressive right there, don't you think? I think if you asked me. Um, if Whit Merrifield, Chris Taylor, and Tommy Pham would be some of the better, more productive players throughout the middle of the season, I would say who? That's what I. That would be my exactly. first. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, good for them. Good for them. Yeah, I'm. I I love it when players like this can rise to the ranks. So, yeah, I mean, a little bit further down, you got names like Stanton, McCutcheon, who has really returned to MVP form really quietly. Uh, Odubel Herrera. The year after the offseason that his team was about to, was like basically trading him. He was basically they're gone. They were about to make him walk the plank for crying yeah. out. So uh, Odubel Herrera was also really on thin ice, and he's really turned it around. Uh, 1.4 war in the last month. Good job there. Uh, you know, Real Muto Simmons, Seeger, Blackman, Contreras, guys like that. Um, yeah, you know, Simmons. I can't. I can't read the entire list, but... You know, I I would if I could. It, I so, love man. lists. I love lists, and I'll I'll read a couple of pictures too. I'm not forgetting about the pictures. Um, it'll take me one second though while I change tabs here. So in July, some of the other top pitchers with Paxton were Chris Sale, who was really right behind him there, 1.9 wins above replacement. Chris Sale, good job not falling off the edge this year like you did last year. Uh, keep it up, and you will find a Cy Young. Well, he hasn't torn up any uniforms this year, so that's true. Keep it up, and you'll find a Cy Young award in your hand with no, with no contest, basically. Corey Kluber's been great. Aaron Nola has been amazing as well. Pretty much just as good as Kluber in terms of WAR, and base like his FIP was actually .01 better than Kluber. So take that for what it's worth. Severino, Waka, Kershaw, Rich Hill. All had great months. Brent Suter for the Brewers. Who knew? He was pretty valuable this month, I guess. And, uh, yeah, a lot of guys like that. So, Jaime Garcia is not too far out there. Another another Yankee now. Yay. So, that's our war report. Uh, we like to do that at the end of every month. Uh, if you guys enjoy it, let us know about it. And uh, before we end off, Farbode, why don't you give us our out-of-the-park report for today? And explain so, what that is for those who don't know. For those who don't know, Out of the Park is like a computer simulation game where you basically simulate being a general manager or a manager of a team throughout the years that you are the general manager of whatever team. Um, and I have the game on my computer, and being the nerd that I am, I play it a lot. And uh, they 
they often have weird, weird um, headlines, and this this is one of them. And also, this was before Dar- U Darvish was a Dodger. This was before the trade went down, so it's kind of weird. Um, the headline says, "Today was a big day for Theodore Darvish, son of Los Angeles Dodger U Darvish. It was his first day of kindergarten at the touted Los Angeles private academy, Winthrop Acres." Theodore passed multiple aptitude exams in order to be accepted. Today's session is a special moment for Theo, and I am just so proud, said you. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I, I love the thought that goes in these headlines. Amazing prediction also, but I think the best part about this is this isn't even a news headline you'd find on any any site you know on nowhere you'll find a news headline that says any there's no news here nothing happened to you darvish it's just i mean but it's not like you can't call it his kid it's not fake news well it is fake news but it's not (laughs) it's it's just pointless it should be our fake news report (laughs) that's that's what i that's what i find so hilarious about it is there's no actual relevance to any team to any to any individual all all that we know from this is that darvish is proud of his son congrats (laughs) okay and his name's Theodore. <laughs> you Darvish, his dad's Persian, his mom's Japanese, and his son's name is Theodore. Yeah, what if, yeah, I don't, I don't know if... I don't think that correlates. I, is you Darvish married even? I don't know what... what I don't what know. Their, what, well, that would make their kid Theodore Darvish if she was, so... Um, you can imagine any anything you want in that regard, so... Yeah, I always like doing these. Thanks for pulling that one up. So... That's gonna do it. We, I think that was a really good podcast. I think we got to cover plenty of good stuff. These other guys don't know what they're missing. So we'd like to thank everybody listening as always. So if you would like to leave us any feedback, we'd very much appreciate it. You can do so by commenting, of course. Um, we, you can leave reviews on, um, on our iTunes. Actually, that would be a great thing to do. I don't normally say that, but that is an option, and it would be. Really nice to know what you think, so you can show your support in that way. You can tweet us at WPB underscore podcast. You can message us any other ways that you find in the description below. And I also really highly recommend that you check out our website. The link for that is down below as well. We've been producing uh, articles for that as well, writing articles, all four of us. So if you're into those, um, check those out and give them a read, and we'd love to know what you think. I'm working on a piece right now to, uh, to try to figure out who this year's Brian Dozier is going to be. Ooh, you're going to have to read Who's it and find out. Who's going to be the Brian Dozier? Ooh. Ooh. I, you know, I I still find it funny that it's it's been a year and that's still just... It's his thing now. Hitting hitting a lot of home runs at the end of the season is just Dozier's thing. So, yeah, that's what I've been working on. You should... Make sure to check that out. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. As always, Farbode.